Hey everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome back to my office. Well, my name is Mike Patterson and I'm a full-time professional photographer located out of Southern Alberta, Canada. I've been a photographer for over 38 years and I do photography, I run a full service photo lab, I also do a lot of teaching and mentoring and on my YouTube channel I like to challenge you to get out there and get better pictures by, well, thinking outside the box. So. It's been really hot, really dry this summer here in Southern Alberta. It's been smoky. It's just, it's just hasn't been a really enjoyable summer for taking pictures. And I got thinking the other day about how nice it's going to be that fall is finally arriving. And then after listening to people and talking to people, I realized a lot of people don't rank fall very highly on their photo shooting times schedules, list, whatever. And a lot of people just, well, they think that summer is the best time to take pictures and they think that fall is sort of the, yeah, it's after summer. So let's go through some of the reasons that fall is so much better for taking pictures and some suggestions how to get better pictures in the fall and what to look out for. So why is fall so good? Well, especially here in Southern Alberta, we have seasons of gray nothingness, which is winter, uh, late fall and early spring because we don't get a lot of snow here and the snow that does come usually melts in the schnook and everything's just a gray flat. The light's really harsh. It's just, it's just not very photographically pleasing. Spring is a nice time, but the problem with spring is, is that you get the flowers, they happen really fast. R flowers are really loud when you're taking people pictures in front of them and they're very vibrant, they're very colorful and then it turns into green. And then the greens are flat. The greens are just green. And if you've ever done per people's complementary colors, you'll know that not a lot of people have green as being a complementary color. A lot of people have the warmer tones, not the green and the blue tones. So when you're photographing people up against green, it's just, it's not a very pleasing background. Now, don't get me wrong. I love green. It's sad every year when the leaves fall and the grass does turn. And the fact that I miss the green summer, I miss the warmth and stuff. But green photographically is just pretty boring. If you're photographing nature and wildlife, the same thing. Wildlife against green, they look okay, but it's not really, it's just green. And if you're doing a lot of scenic pictures, green is green. And if it's just flat green, it's just, it's flat green. Whereas when you get into the fall, the colors start to change. Your greens come different shades. You get light greens, you get dark greens. You get some yellows, some oranges, you get some reds mixed into it. And it just adds more life, more vibrance to the photos. And it just gives your photos a little bit more, well, a little bit more life to them, if you want to be honest. Green is nice, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't, doesn't really show a life to people and to animals and to scenery. Whereas fall just gives that extra push, that extra light, that, uh, that just, just different shades that you're working with. And it complements a lot of people. Now, I know you can't do win or summer weddings or winter weddings in the fall to shoot them. You have to do them when they're, they're being done. But fall works so well for family pictures, for outdoor business pictures, for just so many different things. Product photos, car photos look so much better with the fall colors than they do in the green or the, in our case, the gray of the rest of the year. That it's just so much more well, usable of a time of year to take pictures. The other thing that makes fall so nice is because the colors are, you're getting the golden light for a lot longer. You're getting a color sunrise, a colored sunset, and you're not just getting the sunrise, the sunset, and that's it. You're getting a longer sunrise, a longer sunset, and they're coming at a better time of the day. Don't get me wrong, I like long days. I really do. I like sitting out in the sun. I like seeing uh, sunshine and everything. But when it's from a photography point of view and you want to do sunset photography and the sun doesn't set until 9.30 or 10 o'clock, that's pretty late. Whereas in the fall, the sun starts setting at earlier hours. It also helps when you're doing animals because the animals are, well, you're not up to 10 o'clock trying to catch an animal out in a boat. They're starting to get out in a boat around 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, and you're getting longer time to be with them. And it's just so much nicer and the colors look so much more vibrant with them. So that's the other benefit. Earlier sunsets, or a later sun rises, just gives you that more and a longer golden hour to shoot in. The other thing, if you're photographing animals, is, is that as the weather cools from summer into fall, they become much more active. And if they become more active, you're getting more pictures of them. 
Summertime and the dead of winter are both the same things. I call them the dead times for photographing. And the animals are either staying under the trees to stay cool in the summertime, or they're hibernating and staying out of the cold winter winds. So fall is the perfect time for that. The other big benefit with animals is, is that after a summer of eating, after a summer of dropping their feathers and the molt and after changing their antlers or whatever, they look at the prime of their, well, of their life is in the late summer, early fall. They just look amazing. It's just, oh, especially around here, you get the elk getting into the rut. They get the nice big antlers on them. They get into the rut. They're, they're eating good food. The bears are gorging on the berries. They're looking healthy. All the animals just seem to look so much better early into late fall. In the springtime, you have animals going into molts. They're coats are getting clumpy, they're looking old and tired, their antlers are starting to fall off and so on and so forth. But fall is just so much better for that. So don't put your camera away, get out there and take some pictures. But while you're doing that, take a few things and be cautious of a few things when you go to take pictures. Now, like I was saying earlier, it's been a hot, dry and very smoky summer here in Southern Alberta. That leads to a lot of dust in the sky, a lot of smoke in the sky. This can actually help you for if you're doing sunset pictures because you get more orange and more red sunsets. But the biggest issue is if you're using long lenses, you start to get a cloudiness to the lens if you're shooting over a long distance because there's so much dust, there's so much smoke in the air. Even if it's not really noticeable to you, it can be picked up with the camera. So be very cautious when you're doing that. Take a few shots with your telephoto and see what it looks like before you go out and start taking a pile of pictures because you may be disappointed with the pictures looking a little smoky, just a little cloudy looking. The other thing to be very careful of is because the sun is at a different angle, you're starting to get shadows that are starting to get well pretty dramatic. And as the leaves fall off the trees, you're starting to lose that cover coming through the trees to block the light. And instead, you're getting shadows on all your subjects. So be careful of that. People don't look good if they're all blotchy and everything. There used to be a rule years ago was... The photographer should put the sun over their right shoulder and put the subject in front of them and take the picture. Well, that looked good if you're looking for somebody squinting. In the fall, it looks horrible because you start getting shadows. A power line all of a sudden cuts a line across your subject, or whether it's a scenery picture, whether it's a person picture, whether it's an animal picture. It just doesn't look good with harsh shadows. So watch out for the shadowing. Put the sun beside your subject. Put the sun a little bit behind the subject. Watch for any lens flare, but move the sun so it's not casting shadows on them. The other thing to watch out for is because the sun is starting to get lower in the sky, because you do have clouds, dust, and smoke, we're losing the intensity of the light. So you may have to up your ISO a little bit to get a faster shutter speed, or you may have to look at using a tripod. Either one will work, but just remember when you're using a tripod, if your subject moves a little bit, it's still going to be blurry. Even if your camera is perfectly still on the tripod, you're still going to get movement of your subject. So be careful with that. If you're out photographing a couple elk that are running and they're hitting themselves and they're, they're in a big battle and everything, no matter how stable your tripod is, if you're shooting at too slow of a shutter speed, those elk are just going to be a blur. So make sure you're upping your ISO for that as well. So there's so many benefits. Get your camera. Don't put it away at the end of summer. Get your camera out. Get out there and take some amazing pictures in the fall. Put down below when your favorite season is to shoot where you live. And we'll talk to you next time. Have a great day. Bye-bye now.